there, friends, and welcome to the Paranatural Podcast. My name is Ben. I'm Sean Connor. <laughs> he thinks he's Sean Connery. He wishes he was Sean Connery. Well, he's Jacob. When he was living. Yeah, well, okay, good point. <laughs> he's Jacob. That's and true, tonight we have a fun little story for you. Uh, one that's called The Mince Pie Martians. <laughs> Jacob, how the hell are you tonight? <laughs> well, I'm questioning a lot after I saw those pictures. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. good. Everything's good. good. How are you? I'm I'm doing doing well. It's been a little hot, but not overbearingly so. I noticed your head was looking quite so, shiny today. Well, yeah, I polished it. Ooh, turtle, turtle wax. Turtle wax. You know, yeah. I figured I was doing the bike. I might as well do the head. A little buffer. A little, yep, yep. <laughs> now, do you get your lady friend to do that for you, or do you do it yourself? No, I do it myself. Okay. She might miss a spot. No. We can't have that. But don't you? Or do you, like, mirror, mirror, buffer? Well, I mean, it's my head. If I don't know where it's at, we have problems. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, there are those that would argue it's up my ass most of the time, but, you know, I still know where it's at. Is that why you got that brown stuff on your ear? Could be. Could be. Now, for tonight's episode, we're going to do something a little different. Generally, we take a story and we break it down and we give the abridged version of it. I like that. That'd However... <laughs> In this particular instance of the mince pie Martians, the uh, lady who was involved in all of this has written it down in such a way that it would kind of be disrespectful to not just read her account verbatim. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then, uh, Jacob, you can interject as we go i'm sure i'll have a few thoughts to add in as we go but well you know if it's as confusing as those pictures i'll have stuff to say (laughs) the uh the pictures that he's talking about we'll 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 get to those we'll talk about those a little bit but they will be shared in our facebook group after this drop so they're well they sure are something along with my only fans info and the patreon right 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 so join now so anyway, our uh, witness in question is a Mrs. Hingley. I'm not sure if it says that anywhere else in what I'm going to read, but I wonder if she's single. That uh, I doubt it. Well, no, she wasn't in the story. She had a husband. But this also takes place in 1979. <clears throat> Good year. When she was 43 years old. Ah, So if she's sure. still alive. She's extraordinarily old. And one of them gilfs. Gilf, <laughs> like an extra gilf. <laughs> it's a double G gilf. Double G. <laughs> so anyway, if we're ready, I will just get right into what Mrs. Hingley had to say about her experience with the uh, mince pie Martians. Mince right. pie. Mince right. pie. Here we go. On the morning of January 4, 1979... A cold, dark morning with snow on the ground, I had the strangest experience in my whole life. I live in a small council house in Bluestone Walk, Rowley Regis, near Birmingham. The house is one of a number on a small estate surrounded by wasteland and quarries. We are near Hailstone Quarry, and our road is named after the Bluestone Quarry. We, my husband Cyril and myself, have lived here for nine years. We have an Alsatian dog, Hobo, who is two and a half years old. Her dog's name was Hobo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know if I was allowed to... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I mean, go ahead. You can interject as we go. Okay. But he was a good boy. Yeah. All dogs are good boys. That's true. Unless they don't have the weenie. <laughs> then they're good girls. That's right. Where's a good girl? I work at a factory making soundproofing for cars, and my husband is employed at a cement works. The house has a small front garden and a small lawn at the back about 17 feet by 11 feet. There is a carport at the end of the lawn and a shed. A door opens to a road at the back of the house. 
At seven o'clock on January 4th, my husband was going to work by car, and I stood at the back door to wave him off. Hobo, our Alsatian dog, was by my side. When my husband had gone, I saw a light in the garden and thought, Cyril has left the light on in the carport. I went down to the garden, to the carport, but saw that the light was switched off. As we turned to go back to the house, I saw an orange light over the garden which gradually turned white. It lit the whole garden. We went back into the back door of the house. Suddenly, with a sound like Z, 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 three beings, floated past me through the open door. They glowed with a brilliant light and seemed to float about a foot above the floor. Hey, Benjamin. Yes. Why didn't you say Z? That's, it says Z E E Z E E Z E E. Oh. That's Z Z Z. <laughs> NPM then. My bad. <laughs> it's a strange noise. It is. It's a strange situation. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> As they floated past me into the lounge, I saw that they had wonderful wings. I was so terrified that I grabbed the steel sink in the kitchen. I couldn't speak. I was frozen. She had to lean on the sink because she was oh, okay. startled. Yeah. I thought you meant she went and grabbed the sink to like hit him with it. <laughs> That's what I thought at first when I read yeah, it. I was going to say, damn, lady. <laughs> Why are you scared if you can haul that around? <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I looked at Hobo. He seemed to hobble to his drinking bowl, swaying from side to side. His hair was sticking out all over like a hedgehog's, yet Hobo is afraid of nothing. Have an he... inebriated dog. <laughs> he seemed as though he was drugged. He just flopped down and lay on the floor, stiff with his eyes open open. I felt as though all the blood in my body had drained out through my toes. I was paralyzed. My mouth was wide open. I couldn't move or speak. After a while, the fear seemed to leave me. I felt as if I were lifted up. I wondered what was happening to me. I felt as if I were a different person, as, that, as though I was in heaven, although I was still at home. I seemed to float into the lounge. I held the door, but my feet didn't touch the ground. The doors were wide open, and it was a bitterly cold morning, but I felt warm. All the downstairs lights were on, as it was dark outside. I could hear the little artificial Christmas tree shaking, but the light was so brilliant that I had to cover my eyes. The three creatures seemed to read my mind. It was like a light or an x-ray penetrating my mind. When I took my hands from my eyes, I could see. They seemed to have turned down the light that surrounded them. There was a glow around their heads. I could see them clearly. They were shaking and tugging at the little Christmas tree. There they were, three little slim men in silvery green tunics and silver waistcoats with silver buttons or press studs. They were about three feet six inches to four feet high, all alike. Their pointed hands and feet were covered in the same silvery green, and they had pointed caps on their heads of the same color and with something like a lamp on top. They had transparent fishbowl helmets over their heads, which rested on their shoulders. There were no eyebrows or ears to be seen. Their faces were waxy white corpse-like, and they had black diamond eyes. I don't know much about precious stones, but that is how I would describe them. I didn't notice their noses. Their mouths were very thin. Their wings were wonderful, large, oval-shaped and glowing with rainbow colors, red, violet, gold, blue, green, but more beautiful than our earthly colors. Their wings were covered in dots like braille dots. I thought of Joseph's coat of many colors. Our colors seems like chemical colors compared to them. 
All right, let's go ahead and pause here, Jacob, and give your impressions of the drawing that accompanies this story. <laughs> so we just described the guys. There is a drawing. All right, give me a second. Let me look at this. Okay. <clears throat> so first off, um, okay, my first question, black diamond eyes. Mm -hmm. Why do they got white pupils? Well, I mean, in the drawing, they do. That's the light reflecting. That, that's what light? Do. I don't see a light in this drawing. <laughs> Look, you can't pencil draw light. Well, I guess really talented people can. Whoever drew this was not that. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. All right. Um, they were not exactly an artiste. Possibly more artistic than myself, but not exactly an artiste. So. Yeah, they totally look like tap dancers with wings. Um, <laughs> um, they look happy. They do look like fairly not mean little fellows. Nope, nope. Um, now, is that height on their tippy toes? or? Uh... I'm just guessing in general. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's not exactly explained. Um. I would think from the picture, though, they were quite a bit smaller than she's describing. Yeah, and also from the picture, uh, they're not hung. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to you to think that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, whoever's drawn this can't draw ovals very well. <laughs> well um, what was supposed to be ovals? The wings. Beautiful oval shaped wings. Oh yeah, I guess it did say oval shaped. They're like fairy wings. Yeah. Like they got fairy they look like little gray aliens with wings. Ba with ballerina dancer clothes <laughs> and wings. It's like a fairy and a gray alien mated and made a baby. That's not what you said earlier. What did you say was, earlier? Okay, so earlier what I said it was like it looks like Tinkerbell fuck Gazoo from the Flintstones and they had a love child. <laughs> That's more accurate. <laughs> I mean, you definitely write on the love child because he he looks like he's loving. Yep, he's got a lot of look at him. he's even he's even holding his heart, Jacob. How are you gonna oh, be it's... so mean to this little fella? He's even holding his heart. <laughs> I can be mean to just about anything besides a dog. This thing has nothing on a dog. Like, okay, my next question: mm -hmm. the the fishbowl helmet thing. Mm -hmm. How is that supposed to seal in air and or seal it out? Because it's on his shoulders, and nobody has perfectly round shoulders it that does. go all the way around. So that part of it, it looks like he has a condom on his head, <laughs> That's, but not a tight condom. Just not like, a used one either. Like a very, very loose, loose uh, condom just sitting on his shoulders over top of his head. <laughs> yeah, like like his head should be erect, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, to answer that question, I have no idea what that's supposed to be sealing out, but yeah, he's got a flaccid head it's, with an uh, erect condom. It's definitely um, something to see. So go ahead and get in the Facebook group. Just look us up, yeah. you know, Paranatural Podcast on Facebook. You'll see these pictures and a bunch of other stuff that we got in there. My last thing, I have to say this alien must be a psychopath because only psychopaths do the top button. That's probably fair. Mm -hmm. And he does have that shirt buttoned all the way up, all the way up and all the way down right to uh, his uh... right down past his non-existent junk. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> I said, not hung. Not, you could tell in those pants, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those They're are saying some... gray sweatpants. But... <laughs> those are some skin tight leggings <laughs> right there. But... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did get the, the pasty white face down perfectly. Yeah, they did that well. There's no other color to the picture. So, yeah, of course, they had to do that well. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything you want to say about it? No, just get in the Facebook group and take a look at this picture. Also, one of his legs is shorter than the other, and it's not the middle leg. It's behind. It's further back. That's a perspective thing. That what was a perspective choice. On Maybe they don't got knees. 
I don't know why he would need knees. He's got wings. Then why would he need legs? So he didn't look funny. Uh, er. Failed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I said my piece. All right. Now back to... Uh, Back this thing's fucked up looking. Mrs. Hingley's account here. They were floating around the lounge touching everything. The Christmas cards, the clock, the radio, and all the furniture. At last, I could speak. I said, three of you and one of me. What are you going to do? What do you want with me? Each of them put their hands to their chest with their pointed hands and seemed to manipulate the buttons. A beep sound came from each of the beings' chest, and then the voice came from the chest. The mouths never moved. They all spoke together. We shall not harm you. Where have you come from? I asked, and they said, We come from the sky. They started to shake the little Christmas tree again, and the little fairy fell from the top. I still seemed paralyzed. I couldn't move to pick it up. I said, we put up a tree at Christmas because we believe Jesus was born then. They said, we know all about Jesus. They were looking at the Sunday papers on the table. There was an honors list on the front page. I said, these people have been made lords. They said, there is only one Lord. They looked at a picture of the queen, and I said, you should go to the queen or go see a real lady. I wondered why they came to me, as I am just a working woman. They said, you are a lady. We have a large lounge with a corner unit couch. They sat on the couch and bounced like children. I said, be careful of my furniture. And they stopped. When I spoke sharply, they put the light up, so I thought I had better be friendly with them. They were only small, but they seemed to have power in their bodies that might have harmed me. My eyes still felt sore from the bright light, but I felt happy with them. They looked at me with friendly eyes, I thought. I said, I can't call you creature, so I shall call you gentleman. I started to say, Nice to see you. Nice. They replied, nice. <laughs> now they're just parrots. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> when they floated about the room, their wings fluttered gently. There was no sound. When they moved through the open door to the hall, they folded their wings behind their backs like pleated fans. They circled in the hall, then floated upstairs. The doors to the upstairs rooms were closed, and they floated down again. They picked up the tapes for the tape recorder and looked at the packets of cigarettes on the sideboard. There were bottles of whiskey and sherry on the sideboard, as it was not long after Christmas. I asked, do you want a drink? They said, water, three times. I went to the kitchen and fetched four glasses of water. I put them on a metal tray. I thought I would bring one for myself as well, to show that it wasn't poisoned, and to drink with them to keep them company. As I came near them with the metal tray, I could hardly hold it. The tray seemed to be magnetized towards them. I put the tray down on the table, and each of them picked up a glass when I lifted mine. They seemed about to lift their masks, but when they saw me watching, they put the power light on. I didn't actually see them drink. But when they put the glasses back on the tray, the water was gone. They said, we have been to Australia, New Zealand, and America. We come down here to try to talk to people, but they don't seem to be interested. Shall I tell people on earth about it? I asked, and they replied, yes. They said, we have been here before, and we shall come again. Another thing they said was, everybody will go to heaven. There are beautiful colors there. They seemed to put a light on me to draw out the words they wanted to hear. I was stuttering with nervousness. I was talking about politics and women going to work and said, it's a man's world. 
They seemed interested and excited as though they were listening and understanding. I told them I had not been to chapel for a year or two, as chapels had pop groups and guitars these days, and I didn't like that kind of service. There is no need to worship in synagogues, they said. I didn't know until my husband told me later that it was the name of the Jewish place of worship. I said, the Bible is hard to understand, and they seemed to know what I meant. I told them that I had looked after foster children for seven years, and at one time I looked after 13 stray dogs. The neighbor's children used to come with me to take them for walks. Then I went to fetch a plate of mince pies for them. I put six on a plate and told them to help themselves. They each lifted a mince pie from the plate as though their hands were magnetic. Time out. <laughs> Since when are mince pies made of metal? Yeah, yeah, we got some telekinetic little bastards. <laughs> exactly. I don't know where she got magnetic out of that. Telekinetic is probably the right word. No, she's probably making mince pies wrong. That, that could be too. I mean, I know British food's not that great, but I didn't think they were filling it with iron filings either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, they got too much iron in their diet now. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to return, but <laughs> <laughs> you ain't coming back from that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't be fairy floating belly up <laughs> anyway <laughs> i saw that they were looking at the cigarettes again i'll show you how people smoke these i said i struck a match and lit a cigarette they leapt back as though they were frightened and began to float towards the back door i stubbed out the cigarette and called out come back come back i still seemed to be floating as I followed them, and as they went through the back door, I saw an orange-colored glowing thing in the back garden. A spaceship. It must have been eight to ten feet long and four feet high. It had round windows or portholes. It seemed to be covered with a kind of shining plastic. I couldn't see through the portholes. There was something like a scorpion tail at the back and a kind of wheel on top. You want to get into that part now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, F you, I was right. You were right. It was not an antenna. It was a tail. Mm -hmm. We were having a debate. Again, this sketch will be in the Facebook group, so you guys can <laughs> join the debate. But we were debating, because if you look at the sketch, it looks like an antenna. It very much does. And Jacob was wondering why it was at the back. And I said, well, maybe that's the front. And nope, Jacob, you were right. But that yeah. sure as hell doesn't look like a scorpion tail. <laughs> No, no, the artist once again flunked out. He flunked out hard. What this looks like is uh, kind of like a football, maybe, <laughs> with an antenna coming off of it. I, don't know. I thought it looked like one of those like tomato worms. <laughs> there he is. It does like kind of look real like that fat too. tomato worm with a tail with an antenna on the tail. That kind of looks like that, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, Facebook group, you guys let us know what you think it looks yeah. like. Imagine cigar shape, uh, UFO. Only not exactly a cartoon it, cigar. It's goofy looking. We'll just say that. <laughs> and that does not look like a scorpion tail. <laughs> they still held a mince pie each as they went towards the spaceship and entered it. They flashed the lights twice as if to say goodbye. Then they took off over the fence and away across the open ground towards or Oldbury. The sky was still dark with no stars, and there was snow on the ground. Hobo came to life then and wandered around the garden as though he was looking for them. There was a deep impression on the back garden where the spaceship had settled. I felt warm and happy, although it was such a cold morning. I felt good as though I had been blessed. When I went into the house and looked around, I realized that the clock and the radio had stopped. I spoke to my next-door neighbor, and she said, you should ring the police. I rang the Oldbury police, and they said they would come. I rang my husband, but he couldn't leave his job. I said to him, I have had visitors with wings. He said, what do you mean, birds? <laughs> uh, 
I kind of got right there. Right. <laughs> wait, wait, you will get there. <laughs> I was shaking and crying. I said, no, men with wings. He laughed and said, why don't you go and have your hair done and tell the girls about it? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more like a 50s kind of guy. <laughs> that is definitely not the supportive husband type right there. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen aliens floating around your house. Yeah, whatever. Go get your hair did and tell them broads about it. I don't want to hear shit. About it. I want to hear out of you, woman. <laughs> God damn, dude. Really? Atta boy. Oof. <laughs> she continues. <laughs> I did that later on, and they were very kind. <laughs> Obedience. <laughs> Look, we said it before. I'll say it again. The 70s were a different time, guys. <laughs> like, and especially the 70s in Britain. If I said that to my old lady now, she'd probably stab me with something. <laughs> For all of you who don't know, she's threatened to stab me on multiple occasions, and we've met twice in person. <laughs> She's not violent, really. <laughs> she just just threatens to stab people. Uh, that doesn't right, sound right. good at all. Anyway. <laughs> she's a sweetheart, but she's got knives, so watch but out. But she's stabby. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of her quirks. I'm going to get stabbed when she hears this. <laughs> this is not what I'm going to suggest you listen to. Anyway. <laughs> Mute. <laughs> Here we go. Can do continue before I get in more trouble. The police came from West Bromwich Police Station. They looked around and said, "You look as pa- you look pale as though you have had a shock." <laughs> no shit. <laughs> the cops in these stories are less than helpful. <laughs> I've noticed that every single story. Everyone. They couldn't do much. <laughs> they couldn't take fingerprints. They went away and came back later. They rang UFO Investigation Service in Birmingham, which I didn't know was a thing until just now. Hell yeah. The people came and measured the impression on the ground in the back garden. It was eight feet. Eight feet by foot feet is what this says. Foot feet? I think they meant like five feet. I think it's terrible. You don't know about foot feet? No, I don't know about foot feet. (laughs) Foot feet. Well, my foot feet are size 15. It's got to be bigger than toe feet, right? I hope so. His whole foot feet. Anywho, they (laughs) they also took soil samples for analysis. I haven't heard the results yet. I have had a lot of nice letters from people who were interested after reading reports in the papers. Some people sent tapes to be returned to them with my own story. The West Bromwick College of Technology television production course students have made a film of me telling my story. It was filmed at the technical college at the technical college on March 19th, 1979. My eyes were sore for about a week and I had to wear dark glasses. I have had to have some weeks away from work as I haven't felt well and the doctor advised me to have a rest. My jaws ached after staring with my mouth open with shock when I first saw the beings. How open was her mouth, Jesus? <laughs> her face was a contortionist. That was a train, by the way. <laughs> you flipped your mic on just as a train honked. <laughs> oot, oot. Train never giving me rest. <laughs> I have never read books about UFOs. I only read the papers. I don't look at a lot of television, but like the Crossroads programs and Coronation Street and love stories. Some people have made jokes about me. But people who know me believe me, as they know I am truthful. Some people have written to say that they think the visitors were elves, or beings from the fairy kingdom, or even robots. But I don't know what to think. I know I shall shall never forget them if I live to be a hundred. They came from the sky, they said. And? Which point? Two plus two equals they're aliens. 
aliens come from the sky? I thought they came from space. Sky, space, it's the same difference. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Are you trying to conundrum me right now? We'll get into this in just a second. I have like one more sentence to read, then we're done with with, uh, the story here. All right, make out session later. A few days later, we tried the tapes that had been handled by the beings. They were so distorted that they were ruined. Before January the 4th, they were quite normal. That's it. That is the end of the story. What dicks. Now, touch everything and jump on couches and stuff. To go back to the point you were trying to raise when questioning whether or not they may or may not be of the Fey variety. <laughs> if you look into Fey Lord and read it and then compare it to alien abduction stories, there's actually quite a bit of similarity in the two beings. All right, now I'm going to put a halt to that right now. Okay. I've watched Fern Gully. They come from <laughs> rainforests. <laughs> Fern Gully says it's a lie. Yeah, yeah, and also trees feel pain, so that's why I've gone paperless. I only write in my notebook. <laughs> you know, use as much paper towel as I want. But no, for real, there have been quite a few UFO investigator and folklorist types that have made that connection in the past, Jacques Vallée being one of the more prominent among them. And it's it's really a fascinating connection if you read some of their works and how they put it together. It's Yeah, Ben Word here is gonna do do the Fay because I don't think I could be well, I couldn't be serious at all with that. <laughs> it is it is a subject that's easy to get a little bit twisted with. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do they wear tunics? They might. Mm. These guys did. Yeah, they did. Are you going to look at that and tell me you don't see some fairy inspiration there? Come on now. Benjamin. Come on now. You know what? This is our podcast. I see <laughs> I see fairy inspiration in a few different ways. <laughs> That's probably fair. <laughs> I'm dying what? here. I'm dying here. <laughs> I'm joking. I see that. I said, that's probably fair. That's very fair. Please, <laughs> no one get offended. I mean it with love. <laughs> We're just talking shit. Yeah, you can, you can talk shit about me. I have tremors. I shake a lot. Make fun of me. But if I hear you do it, I'm going to punch you. If he can. If he's not oh. shaking too bad, he misses. You're getting punched, man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Jacob, do you have anything else to, to say about this fun little tale of ours for um, this evening? <laughs> I don't recall her saying that the spaceship made any noise, did it? She did not say. She said it just glowed. Okay. Uh, and, the, and they didn't beep the horn to say goodbye. They flashed the lights. I know, I know. When you said that, I did the beep beep. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> um, uh, also, your wonderful fairies, do they have spaceships? They debatable. Might. That is debatable. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. I would have to get back into the folklore before I quote anything, but yeah, there does seem to be mentions uh, from time to time of various craft. Okay. Um they didn't say a time frame of when they have visited and or when they will return, right? No, they did not. So it's all a surprise. But they were making the rounds, bud. They went to Australia, New Zealand, they came here to North America, or they popped by England. Yep, yep. Wonder if they're coming back to America. I doubt it. They might already have. I haven't seen them. You didn't make any mince pies. Why would they visit you? My mince pies aren't magnetic. <laughs> Maybe that's why they don't like them. <laughs> I'll make a pot pie for them. That's about it. Pot pie throwing some fucking steel shavings for them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll huck a knife blade in there for them. <laughs> Choke that down with your thin little face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I noticed they didn't eat the mince pies. They took them with them. Yeah. Mm. They probably didn't trust them either. They're like, <laughs> they're like, why are these sticking to our hands? <laughs> what the shit is uh, this? Uh, what did you put in here? <laughs> thank you, ma'am. We'll just take these for the road. Yeah, they probably didn't want to take them. They just stuck to their hands. They hooked them out over the English Channel on their way to France. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You wonder why the water there is so polluted. <laughs> hooked them out in the Thames River. Hell, they probably threw it in Lake Erie. That's why it was flammable for all those that years. might be. That might be. That lady's mince pies there were no good. <laughs> no. No bueno. No. The poor fish had to eat them. Now they got six eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the Loch Ness monster migrated. It used to be a guppy. <laughs> <laughs> Ate one of those men's pies. Got big as shit. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Godzilla on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did they go from metal to radioactive all of a sudden? What the hell happened there? <laughs> she has some weird metal. She's a real bad cook. <laughs> Yeah. No wonder her husband didn't want to hear about her shit. He was hungry. <laughs> he ain't got time for you, lady. He's got to eat. Yeah, he visited Sweeney Todd for a better pie. <laughs> That's a deep reference. <laughs> We're going into the deep cuts now, boys. I hope people understand that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, go just go watch the damn movie. That's a great movie. It's well worth a watch. Mm -hmm. There's love. There's other stuff. It's Johnny Depp. Just go watch the damn thing. <laughs> Johnny Depp doesn't make bad movies. Nope. Nope. Just bad wife choices. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, since we're not a uh, current events podcast, really, Jacob, unless you have something else to add for the people. Look at the picture. Yeah, go to, just go to the Facebook. Look at the picture. Go to the Facebook Me group. Look at the picture. Message me and tell me if you think I was accurate on my description, please. <laughs> and as always, if you enjoy our content, then uh, share the show with a friend. That is the best and fastest way to help mm -hmm. us grow. You can just tell somebody else about the two knuckleheads talking shit about weird events on the Internet. Yep. 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 And a uh, little. uh little pre thing this weekend's uh this weekend's podcast this next one it's gonna be it's gonna be fairy tales and lovey dovey <laughs> stuff so tune in it join us next week as we talk about mermaids <laughs> not the friendly ones you know right right they have the d shell <laughs> <laughs> and on that note we'd like to say thank you for listening we appreciate it if you would tell a friend and good night have a spooky night <laughs> got that from a podcast don't don't report me watch out for mince pies <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster and the Loch Ness Monster good night everybody good night